first and foremost, I have a question for you. What does MXM Tune stand for? All right, so yeah, it's pretty confusing. Nobody knows how to say it, but you just said it perfectly. So it stands for my initials, MXMT. And then the tune was actually made originally by my dad. It was an Instagram handle that I made for myself when I was 11. And I thought cartoons would be my claim to fame. <laughs> they weren't. So I turned into a music name and I've been living with it ever since. Okay, so you just answered your own follow-up from I where did. did that come from? <laughs> All right, I appreciate you. Yeah, I got you. Um, I have my question for you. Amazing. So I read that you gave up on acting once, but what was it like at your life at that point when you were thinking about that and, and how did you make it back to acting? Mm, um, I think that was in high school and I don't know if I would necessarily say given up on it just because I was just curious about it. Yeah. And I wrote a paper about it one time, oh, I think freshman or sophomore year of high school and this teacher that I had was like, good paper, but uh, not realistic, so let's move oh. on to something else. And you know, growing up in Indiana, I can understand it. Yeah. And then when I was in college, uh, I just kind of started messing around with social media and Snapchat, and I was like, yo, this is fun. Like, let me see what this is about. And then it kind of developed into modeling, and, and then it slowly became commercials and acting. That's so cool. Do you feel like there was a lot of opposition from people in your life when you were thinking about acting? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> there was. Absolutely, people were just like, yo, you're, you're silly for, you know, leaving college and, and yeah. you know, thinking of this as a reality. And, you know, I'm just happy that, you know, I've made it to where I am so far and hopefully there's there's more to come. So your first EP that you record on your laptop, yes. apparently, has uh -huh. been streamed over a hundred million times. <laughs> Whoa, how did that happen? I don't know, still trying to figure that one out. Um, but yes, I made my first EP on like my laptop. I'm pretty sure it was just for school documents and my parents also were not super excited about me doing music mm. initially. Both of them are teachers and so it was like this, of course your daughter who wants to do the arts, like you, you're not super secure in that pathway for your child. Of but yeah, I recorded it in the guest bedroom of my family's house and used garage band and the rest is history. Garage so, band? Yeah, uh, people can make music with anything. <laughs> What was going through your head whenever the, the, the streams started just flowing in? I honestly don't even think I processed it because I didn't play any live shows until like a year after releasing any music or anything. So, I mean, I'm sure in kind of your situation too, if you're online, you don't process if those numbers are real. You don't yeah, think yeah. those people are like actually people behind the screen. So I just couldn't believe it. It just felt like playing a video game almost and seeing the number go up and felt like I was in like music influencer simulator or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, that's good. How did you find out that you got cast in All American? And what was that feeling like? Oh, was man. it super exciting? Uh, yeah, very exciting. It was over overwhelming. I remember I was sleeping on a friend's floor at the time wow. uh, in North Hollywood. And uh, the showrunner at the time gave me a call. Oh, my gosh. She was like, hey, it's April Blair. We're excited. You know, um, Are you ready to get started? And I was like, uh, uh, yeah, OK. And um, it was just overwhelming. I called my mom, I called my manager, and then, you know, we got jumped right in with two feet and started getting, get, getting, getting right into work. But um, very overwhelming, exciting, and just very, very happy. So yeah. you also answered my follow-up question, uh -oh. which was who was the first person you called? Mama Bear, oh for sure. Oh my gosh. Did you share with your, like, your friends and family? Did you have any like parties or celebrations? <laughs> no, no parties, no celebrations. I definitely, you know, called my best friend, Eddie. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we had a conversation. And, and then after we shot the pilot, came back home, went back to my job. And uh, we just, you know, started to wrap things up because yeah. the, the show had been picked up. Mm -hmm. And then we came out to L.A. and, you know, shooting ever since so it's been a blast with your success how do you feel how do you deal with the pressure of being well known this is a great question that I don't even think I have a full answer to I think I've only been doing this for around three years playing music and being online and doing everything I think that the main thing that I've probably and you also understand this probably 100% is just really staying in touch with the people that you love and your family and your friends and having that community in your personal life outside of just the community that you're forming online I think you can get so short-sighted with like having this amazing opportunity to be connecting with all these people online and to have the whirlwind of social media numbers like sweep you up in it. My mom is still my best friend and I call her nearly every day. Period. <laughs> yeah. I do my best to stay in touch and that's all you can do. That's amazing. What was it like to see the show just blow up so late after it premiered? What was that process for you? It was a little scary. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> what I mean by that is like, <laughs> You know, when our first season aired, you know, it was not really well received. You know, people didn't find the show or people didn't like the show or whatever it may be. And then once we dropped on Netflix, mm. things just changed like that. And it was, <laughs> it was like, you know, this, like you said, the social media numbers kind of start to tick up. And you're like, is this real life? Like, are people really watching this show or are these bots? And um, 
and then you know once you started going outside a little bit more and you realize you got recognized a little more and it was just like oh people actually watch the show you know it was weird it was just we it, weird is the is the best word i can give you what's the weirdest fan interaction that you've had there was one time i was standing in a starbucks line and these two girls walk up to me yeah they're probably I don't know, I'd say early 20s. Mm. And they walk up with their phone like this. No words, <laughs> nothing, just like, oh bam. Gosh. And I'm just like, can I help you? <laughs> like, hi, and they didn't say anything. They, they just were here, oh like my shaking, and then they walked away. And I was like, all right, have a good day, enjoy your coffee. Like, I don't know, it was just so strange. like no words. So like, it wasn't really an interaction as much as it was like, like confrontation with an iPhone. It was like, yeah. I got attacked with an iPhone. Oh, yes. wow. No, that's, that's fun. dramatic. <laughs> okay, here's a question. How right. often do you get a chance to just take time for yourself with your busy schedule? You know, I mean, it kind of depends on like, I feel like I get a lot of time to myself, but maybe it's not restful time necessarily. Mm -hmm. I think you spend a lot of time when you're a creative person probably just thinking about the things that you have to do and always like trying to flex the muscle of, all right, how do I stay creative and work that much? Like constantly. My favorite thing to do is sit and watch Netflix okay. and eventually I will get to probably everything you've done. And, um, but yeah, I just like, I like spending time with my family and my cats and my pets and everything and like being at home because I think when you're on the road a lot you just become to appreciate your own space that you've made for yourself and um, you find ways I think as you you get busier you realize how important it is to allocate time for yourself and um, whatever ways you can do that whether that's like a 15 minute walk at the beginning of your day like you should do it and try and make it happen mm -hmm. yeah that's small <laughs> okay like 15 minute walk it could be 20 even. Oh, I know. Shoot, 20 testing minutes. the limits a little okay. bit. Okay. All right. Finish this thought. If all else fails, at least I have. Family. Nice. Friends. Health. Food. The four Fs. <laughs> the most imperative Fs. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. I'm MXM Tune. I'm Michael Evans Bailey. And um, thank, thank you, you American all. Eagle. <laughs> And uh, thank you, American Eagle. Sorry. <laughs> we can do it we again. We botched that. All I right, no, it's really fine.